In the majority of cases, life is more risky for the males because they either succeed or fail, whereas almost all the females breed. That is why evolution has made the males bigger and more aggressive. It is the female who must choose the best genes because her eggs are few, limited and valuable, and what's more, it is they who will have to look after the young. For a male, the cost of an error is insignificant. His sperm can easily be replaced. In humans, for example, a woman produces just 400 eggs in her entire life, but a man releases 300 million sperm in each ejaculation. The megalanic penguin is colonial and monogamous, so while some males are with their lifelong mate, others, still single, try to find a partner. But it is not easy. While others triumph, he is scorned. Despite the insistence of this male, the female rejects him because he does not have his own hole in which to lay the eggs. No way is she going to risk reproducing with someone who is not even capable of getting there in time to grab a decent home. And without a home sweet home, the girl simply isn't interested, no matter how much he insists. For the female, it is very important that the future father of her eggs has his own living quarters. So if this male wants a mate, he'll just have to get here a bit earlier next year. Almost all animals have one breeding season a year, but there are two species for which this is not true, rats and humans. Human females are always sexually active, and childhood is long, so the couple needs to be a stable unit. And that is of enormous biological importance because it is vital for the survival of the young. This is Papua, New Guinea, and in the highlands, a marriage is taking place. The bride shows off the money the groom has paid, in addition to 30 pigs. The bride and groom are from different villages, and now the two families are gathered together, the bride price can be handed over. In all human cultures, the union of the couple also involves the families and the clans. Without the support of their social groups, a new family would get off to a very bad start. Once the deal has been made, the bride's family takes their share of the food and goes to their village. The longevity of humans means there can be prolonged contact between generations, favoring a lasting biosocial and mental evolution. After the formation of the couple and a result of this, reproduction brings the birth of new individuals. For the majority of mammals, the adaptive success of the males is based on breeding with many females, then giving little or no help in raising the young. So the females are often left to look after the children alone.
This female bear has to teach her two cubs how to fish for salmon, but at the same time must avoid any encounter with a male who would not hesitate to kill her cubs so she would again come into heat. The cubs would not be able to survive in the future without the lessons they learned from their mother during the first three years of life. During this time, even their own fathers would not recognize them and would kill them. The maternal bond is without a doubt the strongest in nature. Any mammalian mother would give her life to save her children and would be capable of facing any danger for them. She is a super animal, ready to sacrifice all. But if she died, the young would not last long, so evolution is on the side of mothers who know when to beat a hasty retreat. A male is fishing rather too close, so it's best to leave. The elephant seals are not exactly model fathers either. In their obsession with defending their harem, these colossi push, press, and even crush the young who, as the almighty sultan rushes past, are often separated from their mother and get lost. They are the pups born the previous year, and they will continue to breastfeed for four more weeks before their mothers go into heat and are again mounted by the stud male. Up to 10% of cubs are killed, crushed by their father. No.